Hi there, my name is Kevin Toppenberg. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I've been restoring a 1935 South Bend lathe, and I think this is part eight of the series. I met these Mennonite machinists once, just the nicest guys. I was asking them, how do they run their machines if they don't use electricity, which they didn't. They came in horse and buggies to the auction where I was at. And they said they use line shafts where they hook a horse up and they have the horse uh, go around in a loop and it runs a shaft that goes in and powers their equipment. And I mention this because line shafts were the predominant way that power was distributed to machine in the 1800s. And by the early 1900s, uh, the electric motor was replacing it, but there was still some shops that where it existed. The South Bend lathe that I'm working at was made in 1935, and it still uses the flat belt system to connect the motor to the, the spindle. And I think they did that because it, it could be used as a dual use. The motor is underneath driving a belt, but the main spindle, the flat belts are still accessible such that the pulleys where the flat belts would connect are accessible from the top. So you could have belts going up to the ceiling, which is how it works in a line shaft system. I say all this because today we're gonna to talk about the motor spindle and the, where the motor is and how it's gonna get power up to the spindle for the lathe. A lot of work to be done today just because have so much stuff we had to get done to get that all ready. But in the end, um, we're one step closer and this lathe is really uh, taking shape. I will give you just a little bit of a sneak peek. Ah, I've already got part of it get together. That's coming up in some upcoming videos, so you're going to want to stay tuned. If you like all this, please give it a thumbs up, and uh, I always appreciate comments. I'm certainly small enough that I'll respond to every one of them. All right, thanks. In part three of this restoration series, I went through how the pedestal started out looking horrible like this, and we got it looking nice and smooth like this. But if you notice, it's empty. Now I want to pick up and talk about the insides. In that part three, I talked about how I got that motor spindle out. So if you want to see how that trick was done, and it was a bit tricky, be sure to check that episode out. But now we're going to pick up and follow the motor spindle through its cleanup and then getting it installed back into the pedestal. I had a bit of a mishap. I had this up on the sawhorses working on it and I didn't have that safety strap on and something shifted and suddenly it flipped over, uh, landed on the floor. Actually, you can see a hole there, punched a hole. The adjustment bar that goes in here, and that's what holds this entire unit up against the top of the, the pedestal. And you would, you would screw it, and then it would go up and down uh, to adjust how tight the belt would be. I think that their belt was slipping, and I think that's because this wasn't going down far enough. So I've repaired it, and I've made it longer. Um, so this is the ball that normally is up in here and so I'll have to take that apart. This had been a, uh, a taper pin. I replaced that with two set screws uh, that screw in. They meet actually at the middle. So I got some th all thread rod and I drilled a 3 8 bore in the middle and I took the shank of this ball down to 3 8 and I put it in there and then I put a taper pin uh, in there. I made it a good three inches longer so it should let that uh, motor spindle plate come down farther if it needs to. So this took me six hours maybe to do all that. I kind of wish that I wouldn't have dropped it. The spindle seems to be okay. It rotates fine. I can't see any dents or any bends or anything. Here's my power spindle. I'm much happier with this bright red. I went to Lowe's and initially asked them and I gave pick out the color card for something called bright red. And I mixed it up and it came on and it looked very much like a salmon color, even with multiple coats and letting it dry. And I went back and they said, well, that's what the computer puts out and we can't do anything different. But then they found actually a pre-made, this stuff is sunrise red. I think it looks real good. Now, why am I doing this? When it's gonna be up underneath the pedestal and soon coated with oil. I don't know, but I still think it looks nice now. For this next part, I want to call attention to how the bearings were set up on the spindle originally. You'll notice that there is the bearing itself, which is built into the casting. I've got that highlighted in red. Then there's a black cap that's on top of it. And then there's actually a piece of string, which I've highlighted in yellow, uh, which uh, holds that cap on there. I keep thinking about these caps. Bronze looking thing you can see in there is actually a ring. I think 
as they slid the shaft in, they used that slot to drop in that bronze ring, which I think is a way of transmitting oil up and around up to the top. And I think they just tied it on with string just because it was more convenient and it was going to be out of sight and out of mind. But it seems very hokey to, to me to do it that way. I'd like to drill and tap there and there and just screw it down. I don't want any chips or the metal fragments to go down in there. So I've got it packed in with the cloth. I uh, opened up the holes up there a little bit and got that screwed in and it looks nice. So now we're gonna do the more difficult side. I thought about starting with the hard side, make sure I could do it, but I figured it might be better to practice on where I had easier access. I'm gonna start by getting all that stuff uh, packed in with paper towel. All right, I've got those both done. The uh, drill could not fit completely in here, and so I was only able to get down half inch, the depth of the thing was half inch. But luckily I did have some shorter 1032 screws. I'm happy with that. The time has come. I'm gonna try to get the motor spindle back inside the pedestal. This is gonna be quite a uh, job. It's hard to see what's going on when I'm putting that motor spindle down into the pedestal. So I wanted to show quickly here that the motor spindle is gonna hang from a shaft and that shaft is supported in two points. First in the upper right hand corner, there's a hinge and then on the right towards the bottom, there's another hinge. You can see the round hole where the bar will go through. And this right here is a retaining sleeve. Just gonna pull it very gently. Lower this down. I'm gonna put a mark. So there's two detents, one here and then one out here. So this is gonna be for the sleeve, this is gonna be for the set screw into the pedestal. And I wanna be able to see from the outside where that is. So I'm putting a mark on the outside. Okay, so it's now through. Need to come down just a little bit more. Gonna need to have that collar on next. Got it. All right, let's go forward a little bit more. So we're through, through the casing. Uh, hole, mounting hole, now we're going, and it's through the shaft, and I'm going through the second one. And we're in! Woo! That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Hallelujah! Looks like it's roughly in the right area. Now, see if I can get a light. was not a good place to have my hand. I thought I was gonna be stuck there. Not a good idea. There it is. Ah. I think my root ball said I said it wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be too soon. Okay, we're lined up. 
screwdriver and set that thing home. Now, where is this other set screw? It looks like it's all the way over against the edge. So I think I'm going to get that when I flip it. Just for review, I turned that upside down and I lowered it in. I put the shaft through and got the shaft rotated for the set screw, which is right down here. Then the, the screw, the set screw for this one is on the other side. So you have to come through here. And there's the set screw on that one. The motor plate will be hanging down below that. The next thing I need to work on is that lifter mechanism. So on this device, which is going to have a handle outside, as it rotates, it's going to turn that. And I think when I was looking at this before, it looked like it had a taper pin connecting it. I'm not actually sure what that thing does because there's a set screw on the other side and a detent for the set screw. When I look inside there, there's nothing here that does not go all the way through, so that never has been used. The next part is this, so that will go in there like that, and then this will go in here. All right, so I got that tightened there. The bolts that hold that in there are all kind of dirty, and some of the threads were kind of mashed over, so I wire wheeled it and ran a die over it. I think I'm going to be able to resuscitate those okay. Let me get the other three. And voila, four good bolts. I've got that handle put in. And then that set screw is there. And then this piece goes, this piece goes around. And then Nyx will attach our... The next part is this. This will go into that pin we uh, showed last. And then this will go into there. But what I'm trying to do is there's a pin right here that goes through and this thing will slide. I'm not sure what we're supposed to do to get that to move along. Well, for one thing, I see what it is. There's a set screw in the middle piece right there. That's the, that's the kicker. All right, let's try this again. That set screw is out. Tighten back up that set screw. And Bob is indeed my uncle. Next, this threaded screw is gonna go through the corner of the spindle plate and then as that gets rotated it will pull it up and I now see that I have to get it through there first because I made it longer so I'll have to put that through then put this piece on All right. now I've got to screw it in here got that in got the pin put through putting the little set screw back in that middle piece. Of course, it's at a funny angle now, so I can't easily screw it, but who doesn't love using one of these, huh? That's good times. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it back out and have it so the set screw is accessible on the other side. That would make more sense. Pin coming out yet again. Come on, pin. I love this pin, it's my good friend. Should be able to access that screw. Okay. So this is how that works. This goes up. And I think, what if there's a pin somewhere to keep it from snapping back down? Maybe it just holds up. I have to look into that. And then this part down here you can screw for fine adjustment.
Well, that was a job well done. So this up is loose, down is engaged. I don't see any pin that locks it. It can just go round and round. You would not be running the lathe. You would do this to slide the belts to the different positions for like, it's got one, two, three, four spots. So that's what it is. You just bring that up, slide your belts to where you want them to go, and then go back down. So this wouldn't be for like disengaging the motor. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that mounting plate, the motor mounting plate on, and then I can attach the motor to the bottom side of it later. How far we've come, and yet so far to go. We are balanced on the wire between our dreams of status quo. So the motor plate is going to hang from a shaft right here. And then that will fall down and it allows the motor, which is here, to be tensioned with the belts onto that drive spindle. And it looks like uh, the system was designed to be assembled before you put it in there because there's a set screw to hold that shaft and it's right back there. So I'm gonna have to try to see if I can feel with my hand to try to find the right Allen wrench to back out that set screw blind. That's gonna be fun. Maybe I can get a mirror in there, that'll help. The eagle-eyed people out there saw this earlier, I know, and have been shouting at the screen saying that you're not gonna be able to fit the shaft in there. There's no way to get it in. It has to be put in first. So, I'm gonna have to undo everything that I've done this evening and undo the coupling, turn it upside down, undo the shaft, pull the whole thing out. Then I can put in the motor plate then I can put the whole thing back in there together. But I'm not gonna do that tonight and I'm not gonna do it on camera. So that's that. I'm going to the house. A little longer than a few minutes later. I lied. I can't walk away and leave this. So I'm gonna try to get it now. before I put it back in. The set screw for this shaft is right there. And this device here is made such that it can apply a force this way, which would then tighten the belts. I mentioned it was going to be a hard job and then I said oh that wasn't so hard after all it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be don't say such words all right it's good to have that all in a couple more things I want to point out number one I have to go back and look at the pictures but I suspect that there's something that goes in here that does limit the uh, rotation of that and then there was this that went in here and I think that that's going to limit how far down or how far over that spindle base can swing over and since this bolt has a bend in it I suspect there was some uh, force on it. Uh, I've got two adjustable screws that go in here one is longer than the other and I think each of these one will adjust the the top part and the lower part and then those nuts act like a jam nut. All right. I like it. Now for the limiter, this spot back here is the limiter and it initially used this uh, square head bolt. Going through my old bolts that I have, I have a box and I found this magnificent uh, bolt. Oh, I see. The reason it wasn't touching is I had the handle up. 
I'm gonna put it in the down position. Then I'm gonna tighten it up. Yeah, that thing's just hanging out in there. This is asking to get bent. I found a half inch 13 cap head bolt that uh, just about the right length. I'll decide if I'm gonna do that or if I'm gonna use these longer things uh, later on. And here you can see where that bolt hits that plate, but does that not look awkward to you? And then here is where those other two bolts come through limiting. I don't know what I just did there, why it's shifted. What happened with that banging when it was in the upright position, this was coming down and putting a lot of force here and it was essentially jammed in there tight. And then when I was moving the handle off, it didn't suddenly sprung off of it. And that's what the sound was. Okay, I've got that motor cleaned up. I did that off camera. Problem is, is that hole is not, the hole pattern's not good. That's offset. I really don't want to fight with that thing. I'm going to take it back out and open up that hole a little bit. Something I just noticed that concerns me, and that oh. is that the motor and that larger drive wheel do not line up with each other. I did not disconnect this from these mounting adapters, and there's only one way it could go. So I think whoever made that just made it wrong. Take the motor back out. I need to mill a slot so that it can slide. Yeah, rate right at 3 8 Well, moving these holes over is not gonna be easy because they've got a bevel in the back. So I think I'm gonna to have to move the mounting holes of the plate. I'll just quickly show how I'm cutting the slit. I've got a drill vise. I had to come and really tighten down this Gibbs adjustment here to keep it from being able to move. You can't really mill in a uh, vise because this thing is just pressed on. And if you put a lot of lateral force, this chuck will just fall off. So I'm trying to make a series of just downward cuts uh, and it's squawking and chattering and making a big racket, so I'm not gonna show it on film. So I got four, the four slots cut. And the other thing I wanted to point out is I'm using an end mill, not a drill. I don't think a regular drill would have worked. When you do something hokey like this, you really appreciate how good a true mill is. All right, I got that all fastened in. The uh, two pulleys line up properly. Got those bolts all cinched down tightly. It's brisk out here. I'm guessing somewhere around 20 degrees. I don't know if it's gonna show up, but Orion's there in the night sky. It's my favorite constellation. I've gotten three belts um, for the motor. This was a 45 inch belt, and I think there was just one of them that was on there. So the original belt, and I was wrong, there was two of these, not one. The original belt was 45 inches marked on the outside. And let me just show you that it looks too big. If you go around here, it's quite loose. And in fact, if I, when I go to lift the motor plate up, because it swings at an angle, it starts to hit this tensioning bolt. It starts hitting that before it can come up and get tight enough. So I wanted to be a little bit smaller, so I went for go to 44 inches, go down one inch. There's a big difference at the auto parts store. For example, like the 44, I think was gonna be like $25, but by going to 43 and three quarters, it was $8. But this thing, I'm really, was just barely getting it on. And I'll show you, I had to kind of work it on and be careful not to get my fingers pinched. Roll it around a second time. There, got it. Okay. In this slack there, but it's just the difficulty of getting it on. So now that I've got that, now I'm going to tighten up this nut, and I'll probably need to come back and do that again once I flip it over. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that it's wired for the 230. So it is wired for the 230. So I'm just going to put this all back in. I uh, haven't changed anything. Only thing left to do is to thread this wire through the access slot, flip it back over, and tighten that collar shaft on the top. Okay, that's 
good and tight. The pedestal is done. Tum da da da. Peace out.